Okay, so good morning, everybody. So let's see, I'm going to be asking questions and then we'll, you will write those things down and we'll keep going with our class. So let's start. Okay, uh, let's start with the cell theory. Okay, question. What did Matthias Sheldon propose in the cell theory? Answers, please. Yes, good job. Yes. Then next, what did Theodor Schwann talk about or propose in his theory? Yes, everybody, good. You did great. The cells are building blocks, the cells are building blocks of plants. Plants are composed of cells. Yes, all of them are correct. Yes, the cells are the basic unit of life and not only plants are composed of cells, but animal tissue as well. Good job. So, and finally, we have Rudolf Birkhoff. What did he say? Yes, cells develop only from existing cells. Cells compose organisms. Cells come from pre-existing cells. Cells develop only from existing cells. Yes, good job, everybody. So, as you say, Matthias Sheldon, Theodor Schwann, and Rodolf Virchow were the ones that formulate the cell theory. And they the propose three statements, as you say, and in 1838, Matthias Sheldon said that um, plant uh, tissue are composed of cells and that cells are building blocks of all plants. Yes, then Theodore Schwann in 1839 said that not only plants but also animal tissue is composed by cells. And he said two things. The first one, cells are organisms and all organisms consist of one or more cells. And the second one, he said, the cells is the basic unit of life in or living beings. Okay, in 1855, Rodolf Virchow, he expanded, he said a little bit more about this, the theory. He said that the cell will just develop from pre-existing cells or just from other cells. If there is no cells, there won't be another or a new cell. Yes, so Birkhoff as well, he said that disease cell came from healthy cells. So meaning that a normal cell for some reason could develop an illness. And then after that, the disease cells will reproduce and will make maybe a tumor, maybe uh, develop cancer, so something like that. That will be what he said. So taking and putting all in, okay, I'm going to do something here. Okay, yeah, so the cell theory then we have just three statements. All living organisms are composed of cells and uh, yes, you can go. All living organisms are composed of cells and by the structure that they produce. Therefore, the cells are the morphological unit of living beings and they might be unicellular or multicellular, depending on how many cells do they have. The cell, the unit, the fundamental unit of structure and function in living things, and cells arise from pre-existing cells through cellular division. So, question here. 
can I divide the cell in a smaller pieces and still have life? No, that is right. Remember, if I divide the cell and ribosome by itself won't have life, yes, everybody know, yes, that is correct. So, according with this, I will ask you, a spontaneous generation is proved or not? No, yes. A spontaneous generation is this proof? A spontaneous generation is not proof? Correct. Great job. So thanks for that. So let's go with the general characteristics. What will be, that was a question, that is the question. What will be the three main parts that a cell will have in common with all the cells? So all the cells will have in common. Plasma membranes, seed cytoplasm, and DNA. Plasma membrane, cytoplasm. Good job. Yes. Yes. Plasma membrane, DNA, and cytoplasm. Good job, guys. Muy bien, chicos. So, now, what is the plasma membrane? We are going to start with the structure or remember a little bit about the structure. So here we have our cell membrane. Just a question again. Can you see the slideshow? Pueden ver las diapositivas? Yes. Okay. So here we have the plasma membrane. And then these red little things with yellow tails are the phospholipids. Then we know the phospholipid is a B layer because we have phospholipids in the here and some other phospholipids down here. And right here, we have the proteins. So if we think about the plasma membrane in the structure, we are going to have a B lipid, a, excuse me, a phospholipid B layer with proteins. The proteins are in blue in this case. What is or what this membrane does? This separates the cell from a different or from the environment. And one of the functions is a selective barrier for the import and export of materials. Meaning nothing can come into the cell or go out of the cell without passing through the cell membrane. Then, for example, if I want oxygen passing into the cell. Where it's supposed to pass through? A través de que debería pasar si necesito que el oxígeno llegue al interior de mi célula. Cell membrane. Yes, cell membrane. Yes, cell membrane. Great. If you need, or the cell needs to send out maybe protein, like, or an enzyme, I will say insulin, insulina. Si necesita salir la insulina de la célula, ¿por dónde tiene que pasar? Yes, everybody, cell membrane. Good job. So let's do next. We'll be the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. So if we remember, we are going to have two parts in the cytoplasm. One will be the cytosol and the other part will be the organelles. The cytosol is made of water and the organelles are the ribosomes, are the mitochondria, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, or what um, plasmids Chloroplast, depending on the type of cell that we are going to find in the cytoplasm. So two parts, cytosol and organelles. If we have organelles here, 
we are going to have all the vital function for the cells happening in this part. So, what are now, question for you, the two parts of the cytoplasm? Okay, nobody knows? Okay, yeah, cytosol in organelles. Yes, good job. Perfect. And why we say that the vital functions are happening in the cytoplasm? Cytosol and organelles, yeah. Okay, next question. The vital functions, why? the viral functions are happening here in the cytoplasm. ¿Por qué las funciones vitales de la célula pasan en el citoplasma? Because of the organelles. Yes, muy bien. Porque los organelos están en el citoplasma. Great job, guys. Everybody. Good job. Okay, perfect. So let's keep going. And now we are going to talk about the genetic material, or in this case, about DNA. So if you see here, we have a cell. And this cell has a nucleus. And in the nucleus, we find chromosomes. And the chromosomes are made of DNA. Good job, everybody. So DNA is the genetic material and that codifies the information to control the function of the cells. So when the cell needs more proteins, they are going to be produced, yes, in the cytoplasm by the ribosomes. Se van a producir en el citoplasma gracias a los ribosomes, sí. Pero el núcleo, el, um, si es que tiene la célula núcleo o en el caso de que no haya núcleo, simplemente el ADN va a ser que va a decirme o indicarme cuando se produzca uno u otro suceso en mi célula. Entonces va a ser como yo sé decirles el cerebro de la célula en este caso. Ok, next. We are going to have two types of cells. That is easy. What are the types of cells that you can oh, classify? Okay, please, prokaryotic is one. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic, yes, both, correct. So now we can divide prokaryotic into other groups. What will be those groups? Good job, guys. Bacteria and archaea. Yes, that will be the classification of the prokaryotic cells. And then we have the other group, eukaryotic cells. And then eukaryotic cells will be, or in this group, we are going to have the rest of the cells. So, animal cells, plant cells, fungi, entre otras. So now we are going to see the prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells, bacteria and archaea, as you already said it. Size, we have a diameter of the diameter that well goes around here, 0 0.2 to 1.5 micrometers. And then the length, meaning from here to here, 2 to 8 micrometers. The shape will be variable. And according to the shape, we're going to name the bacteria. So give me two examples of the bacteria according to the name. Two examples of the type of bacteria. I'm not asking for a specific name of the bacteria, but a general name. Cosi, Cosi Vasili, yes. Vasili, Cosi. Yes, Coco Vasilis. Yes, perfect. Vibrion. Okay, now question. The Vibrion, we are going 
I already gave you an example during class. And the Vibrio produce an illness. What is the name of that illness? And if you remember the name of the bacteria, let me know. Cholera, yes. Anybody remembers the name of the bacteria? Cholera, correct. Cholera, yes. Cholera. Anybody? Alguien se acuerda el nombre de la bacteria? No, it's not Helicobacter, but good try. Vibrium cholerae, yes, that is. Good job, Luis. So now we are going to see here. Here are the bacteria that we already, and you already gave me the names. So COSI will be, co or we can say that there are three main groups. COSI, Bacilli, and others. E. COSI, we're going to have coccus, diplococcus, streptococcus, and staphylococcus. And as you see, coccus is just one spherical bacteria. Diplococcus, there are two bacteria together. Staphylococcus is like a chain of bacteria. And the last one is like a grapes, un racimo de uvas. Bacilli, un bacilo simple, largo, que tiene la forma denominada rod, alargado, alargado. Diplo, bacillus, o diplo, bacilo, que tiene cuántos bacilos, si estamos diciendo diplo, two. Coco bacilli will be a mix between what bacteria or which bacteria? Un cosibacillus. Coco and bacillus. Coco, cosi and bacilli. Cocos and bacilli. Yes. That's, that's correct. So let's go. Here we have the vibrio that looks like a coma. Espirilla like a spiral. Espiroquet, remember the spiroquet looks like a crockscrew o un saca corchos o un tornillo. Esa sería la forma que tiene una espiroquet. And then we have the filamentos, meaning the long kind of bacteria. Bacterias alargadas. So next we are going to see the prokaryotic cell. So prokaryotic cell, we're going to have many, many parts here and we're going to be seeing each of them. So the capsule that is in red, this is covering the whole bacteria and it's going to protect the cell and it's going to, if other organisms try to eat the bacteria, this is going to cover the bacteria and protect the bacteria. Entonces, la cápsula que está fuera de toda la bacteria, lo que va a hacer es permitirle o darle una función de protección. Con lo cual, la bacteria va a, si es que algo, algo le engloba, algo le come, no va a dejarse matar fácilmente. También le ayuda a retener humedad dentro de la bacteria y le ayuda a que se adhiera a algunas superficies y absorba o algunos nutrientes. Cualquiera de estas serían funciones de la cápsula. Luego, cell membrane o plasma membrane. Remember, we can use uh, both names. Podemos utilizar los dos nombres, cell o plasma membrane. ¿Qué está haciendo? It is... In this case, it is in color green, and it's inside. In, as well, it will be make of, made of phospholipid bilayer, regulate the flow of substances that comes in or out the bacteria, or in this case, the cell. And they are part of the cell membrane. We have the mesosomes. These mesosomes are substances that are here and going to help with respiration of the cell and in cell division. Entonces, la membrana celular o la membrana plasmática igualmente está constituida por dos, por una bicapa de fosfolípidos que están rodeando al citoplasma. Y 
van a permitir que haya el intercambio de sustancias entre el interior y el exterior de la célula. Y además de eso, en esta parte se encuentran unas zonas llamadas mesosomas, que son enzimas que están asociadas a la respiración de la célula durante la división celular. Mientras que vamos con la cell wall, que sería en color amarillo. The cell wall is an outer covering that protects the bacterial cell and gives the shape. And it's made by peptoglycans. Remember, peptidoglycans, glyco, where, question, where does glyco come from? ¿De dónde viene la palabra glyco? Glucose, 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 or glucido, glucose or glucido, good job. Ahora, ¿qué función tiene if it is in the cell wall or making the cell wall? What will be the function of this? Give shape. Si le da shape, ¿cuál es la función? Structural. Muy bien. Entonces, tengo dos cosas. You say that the glyco, glyco, uh, peptidoglycans come from glucids y glucids that have a structural function. So, if we say that it's a glucid, we are saying that it's a carbohydrate. And we say that it's a carbohydrate that has a structural function. What is the type or where we can classify the peptidoglycans? ¿Dónde podemos clasificarles a los peptidoglicanos? Monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, or polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, good job. Poly, yes, polysaccharides. Everybody gets a 10 right there. Good job. So let's go with the next part of the por, uh, prokaryotic cell. So now we have again the cell and we have here more parts of my cell. So let's, ribosomes. Ribosomes, as, what is the function? Just to make proteins. And then we have plasmids. Plasmids are short part of DNA that are in the cytoplasm, but this DNA is not the same as the whole DNA of the cell and it won't replicate as the other DNA. So it will kind of an independent type of DNA. Yes, responsible for protein production. Good job, Stefano. Then we have the pilis. So the pilis, do you remember? Let's see if I can do a picture here. So here, we are going to think this is the, my bacteria and we are going to draw some pilis here, okay? Okay, so let's see, some pill is here. And if you remember, what is the function of the pilis? ¿Cuál es la función de los pilis? ¿Qué, para, qué me, ¿Para qué me sirven estos pilis en mi bacteria? What is the function? Transfer genetic material. From where to where? ¿De dónde a dónde? Are there to something, yes transfer genetic material. That is correct. So transfer genetic material from one bacteria to another bacteria that has pilis in it. So there will be the transferring of genetic material. So now I'm going to draw, this will be my genetic material here. And now I need to, Pass and 
My other bacteria has genetic material as well. So here is genetic material of this bacteria. And here, let's change the color. Let's put a yellow one. So now what is going to happen? If we're saying that genetic material is going to be transferred, I'm going to send some genetic material from the, this cell through the pili to the other cell. So now I have genetic material going from one cell to another cell, right here through the pili. The pili can have another name, can be pilus for singular, fimbrid I for plural or fimbria for singular as well. Where we find this, we find the pilis present on the surface of the bacteria. Okay, um, this helps to adhere to each other, so bacteria to bacteria, bacteria to an animal cell, or bacteria to an inanimated object, like a table, like a, a cloth, like my skin, could be. And, okay. Then, we are going to have the genetic material. As we say, the genetic material is like a circle. If you see in the, this picture, it's like a circle in a double helix of DNA. And it's not enclosed, so it doesn't have a nuclear membrane. No tiene una membrana celular. Okay, and the flagell. What is the function of flagell? El fue la función de los flagelos. Los flagelos, moverse, give movement to the cell, movimiento, provide movement. Yes, that will be the main function of the cell. Great. So now, guys, uh, you have a questionnaire to solve, and that is at the end of our um, diapositive uh, slideshow that you already have. So, first of all, do you have questions? Alguna pregunta? Alguien tiene alguna pregunta? Está claro todo? Everything is clear? Okay, great. So, this class will be posted on YouTube, maybe, late this afternoon or tomorrow morning, and then I will send you the link so you can see it, okay? Uh, don't worry, if somebody can't get into the class, I will send it to them. Okay. El cuestionario que tenemos en las diapositivas. And we will have class tomorrow. Yes, we'll have class tomorrow and we'll have class on Friday. 